You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, something you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another another Let's Play episode of K's Path. So, guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you, and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go! Alright. <clears throat> oh, one second, guys. Sorry about that, guys, I'm back. Okay. I don't even know what to say, other than wow, that is. You know, you're a much nicer guy than you give yourself credit for. Really? I thought you'd yell at me for being too nosy after I said all that much. Well, maybe a little. But I guess you're right, although I'm not sure how I feel being compared to Urata. Still, I never really thought about asking you guys for support. I've always seen my family's issues as a burden that I'm supposed to carry. I'm not even sure how I'd go about asking for help. But I do appreciate your kindness. Ibuchi-san, really, just hearing all of this already makes me feel loads better. I'm glad to hear that. I guess my conversational skills aren't as bad as I thought. Oh no, please don't misunderstand. Your conversational skills are absolutely terrible, but the feelings came came across regardless, and that's what matters. This little shit just insult me while complimenting me? I, I don't even know how you should feel about that. Oh, and about the other thing you said. Hmm? What other thing? I mean, I've said so much. It's true that I tend to feel more comfortable around Mizuguchi-san, and I do tend to gravitate towards her more often than not. But it's not because I like her more than I do you guys nor because I trust her more. Really? Why is it then? It's because she's a very extroverted person. For better or worse, she's simple. She wears her feelings on her sleeve, and you can always tell what she's thinking. She's the only person whose feelings I don't have to worry about. I tend to pick up a distance between me and others. I know that much. I've already told you before, but I've lost many friends because they were only interested in my family name. Over time, I began to grow paranoid of how other people see me. Even if I truly believe you guys are my friends, I'm always worried that somewhere, deep down, you actually dislike me. I know it's silly of me. You guys have more than proven yourselves, even if we've only known each other for a short time. I know none of you are the type to do that. But I still feel more comfortable around Mizuguchi-san, because I can always tell what she thinks of me. None of that means that I like her more than I do you guys, so please don't let yourself believe that. Wow, I... Kaken, I, I never... I never imagined this was the reason. In fact, since you've been so nice to me lately... I'll let you in on a little secret. Oh? What is it? Out of all my friends, you're the one I admire the most. Both in and out of the courts. You've been the objective I've inspired to reach since we first met. What? M me? Yes, so please don't come up with this nonsense that I like Mizuguchi-san better than you all. If anything, I say, I'd say you are my favorite, Yuichi-san. I... Wow, I don't even know what to say. Keiken, I, I, I... Please, you don't have to say anything. I believe this was enough sappiness for one night, don't you think? I, um, I guess. It's getting late. How about we eat something to get a, and I get a car to take you home? You don't have to send me in a, over in a car. Oh, really? Are we going to walk back home? It's a three-hour trip on foot, you know. On second thought, maybe it might be a good idea. I'd ask, if you, I'd ask you if there's anything in particular you want to eat, but given your track record, I'm pretty sure it would be stuck here forever waiting for you to choose. Hey, that's not... Untrue. Kasich presses a small button with the symbol of a bell and turns off the TV. Not one minute later, I hear a, knock, hear a knock on the door. Kasich walks up to it and I can hear him talking to someone on the other side. Uh, come on. You called. Could you send over some food for the two of us? Just a few hamburgers will suffice. Young master, I don't think your father would approve of you eating that. If I were to concern myself with the things he disapproves of, I wouldn't be able to function anymore. Very well, I'll bring it over soon. I hear the sound of a hurried steps echoing on the other side. Uh, why would your father disapprove of you eating ham eating burgers? He hates fast food. Wouldn't be half bad if you weren't so damn vocal about it. I've had more salad this past month than, past month than most people do their whole lives. I need meat. I, I see. Feel free to take a bath if you want. Uh, a bunny that eats meat. Interesting. <laughs> it might take a while for the food to be delivered. I can ask a maid to come over and pick up your clothes to be washed, too. I don't have anything else to wear if I do. Lies. I know you have your tennis clothes in your bag. And before you say you don't like undressing in front of other people, it might not look like it, but my bathroom door does close. I... but... but... You don't have to if you don't want to. It's just that I tend to like cleaning myself up before I eat. I don't want to end up contaminating my food. Wow, germaphobe much? No, just thorough. I'll pass. I'm not really comfortable with the idea of bathing at someone else's house. K 
Haken shrugs. He walks over to his closet and picks up a couple of clothes. Well, I'm going to take a quick shower then, if you don't mind. A shower? Why not a bath? He smiles. I hate baths. He walks into his bathroom and closes a sliding door I didn't even know was there. Pretty, nif pretty nifty setup. Oh, ooh, nice. After quite a filling dinner consisting of burgers and fries, I feel like I could just roll my, roll my way back home. Heh, <laughs> they always try a little harder whenever we have guests over. He walks back to his room and plops down on the bed. That was very good food, I'll give you that. Yeah, to be honest, if I could have a sampler of food instead of the convoluted crap my family tries to force on me, I'd be a lot happier. You don't like the way you live here? Why? I think it's amazing. Sure. Tell me, how would you enjoy getting constantly told not to do the things you want to do because what would the other rich snobs we know think? How would you like getting told you're not allowed to choose what you want to do with your life because you're going to succeed your father's company and that is final? No, I don't enjoy this one bit. The benefits aren't worth being turned into a puppet for my family. I don't think they're making you a puppet. They just want what's best for you, I'm sure of it. You obviously don't know my family. No, actually, scratch that. You absolutely don't know my grandmother. The woman is a nightmare. She hates me, and she makes sure I'm always aware of it. I think hate is kind of a strong word. No, she literally hates me. She said to herself, she hates how she had to take such a bastard in. She takes every chance she gets to insult my mom and father and never says anything... And my father never says anything against her. They're awful, the both of them. I, I'm sorry, I had no idea. It's alright, I'll manage. Once I go pro, I'll cut ties and I'll never have to deal with them again. So that's why you're always trying so hard in practice. Yeah, the funny thing is, I don't even—I didn't even like tennis at first. My father forced me to play it because he thought it'd look good if his son became a well-known tennis player in the nation. He thought it'd be good press and that I'd stop when I graduated. Joke's on him now. I actually intend to do this for a living. Well, anyway, it's starting to get late now. I've already asked them to prepare a car, so we should probably, be, should probably get going. I'll see you off. Uh, Alright, try not to go crazy after I leave. Nah, I had, I've had plenty of practice dealing with these clowns. Plus, I'll finally be able to practice once you leave. If it weren't for that smile he has on his face, I think he's trying to tell me how annoyed he is to have me around. Okay then, take me to, take me to the car. Kaken escorts me to the front of the house where a, limo, where a limo was already waiting for me. Once I get in, he, he waves goodbye to me as the car drives away, his figure becoming smaller and smaller. I spend the entire trip thinking of everything, thinking of everything I had found out about him today. I never knew any of this stuff. Have I been a bad friend to him all this time? Ding ling ling. Ding ling ling. Well, you guys seem to be enjoying the one episode a day format, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Morning! As soon as I walk into the classroom, I see a few friendly faces of other classmates that have gotten there first. Good morning, Yuichi kun. She smiles warmly at me, taking her eyes off the person she was talking to to greet me with a little wave. Do you have any news on that thing I asked you to look into? Sorry, not yet. My friend said he'd look into it and give me an answer by the end of the week. You asked him to look into a thing? Please tell me it's not more playing cards. Kyoko grimaces, looking between the two of us with annoyance. Oh, sorry, Kyo-chan. I forgot you were there for a second. I need to drink some water soon. Ugh, election night. Election night was long for me. Not a lot of sleep. We did pretty good, though. Ah, hmm, hmm. They were just talking, not 30 seconds ago. Don't just casually forget about me. I see you two are as inseparable as ever, huh? Are you two mocking me? No, nothing like that. Sorry, Kyo-chan. I'm just excited about the possibility of Yuichikun getting me those rare ones I've been looking for. Kyoko sighs, pressing the palm of her hand against her face, completely covering one of her eyes. Yes, I was right. It really is the playing cards. They're not just playing cards, Kyo-chan. They're vintage collector's items from failed trading card. Kyoko waves her off nonchalantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vintage cards from trading card games that failed decades ago and are super hard to find on the market. Honestly, why do I still bother with you? Nikonishi sighs Nikonishi and sighs in exasperation. Oh, that's so sweet. You already know my speech by heart. I really don't understand how two people can be so completely different from each other and yet be such good friends. Yes, I see the irony. Well, I promise I'll keep you updated. If he manages to find it before the end of the week, I'll send you a message. All right, I'll be waiting anxiously for it then. You really need to get out more, Aya-chan. Well, at least they're good friends despite their differences. That's admirable in and of itself. Just a couple steps away, I'm greeted by the soft smile of this big lug. Good morning, Yuichi-kun. He's casually snacking on a jumbo bag of chips. Actually, he's eating most of the time anyway. It's already become a pretty normal sight to see him like this. 
Oh, there are a few flakes stuck. Oh, there are a few flakes stuck to his chin. Should I tell him about them? Thanks for that recipe you gave me. I tried it last night. It was great. I'm glad you liked it. What did Jen have to say? He. I can answer that. Wow, Jen, your face looks terrible. What happened to you? Your recipe happened to me. My recipe? You didn't like it? That's not the point. He ha he made so much of it, over ten pounds, and he made me eat it all. Dear God, he made me eat it all. How are you still alive right now? Well, come on, Jen. He wasn't that bad. I ate four pounds of food in a single sitting. No one should be able to eat that much food. No one. Well, there's no way I'll be able to have an actual conversation with him. He's too riled up right now. And you actually had a pot big enough to cook all that food at once? Don't just brush me aside! It's fine, Jin. Everything worked out okay in the end, right? Jin pats his brother on the back. Are you crazy? I was sick all night- Ugh! Jin starts holding his stomach as his whole body starts trembling. I think it's going to take me an entire week to digest all that food! But wasn't it delicious? That's beside the point. You're not supposed to eat so much, so much that you feel sick. What's wrong with it? Ugh, screw this. I need to lie down. Well, I'll let them deal with their brotherly love on their own. In fact, I think Jin is just about ready to throw a punch of brotherly love on Jin's shoes. I hope to God that my relationship with Aki never turns out like that. Well, I'll just sit around until class starts. God, even though I've only known him for a short while, I can safely say that this place is really boring without Jun around. Where is he anyway? And what time is it already? Ugh! It's that early still. I feel a tap on my shoulder, turning around to see who it is. Ah, Ryoji, good morning. The bear nods, handing me a small disc case. This is the one you asked for. Ah, as short, on, short on words as always. Reach out and pick up the case, seeing the name Blaster Punisher 4 stamped on a colorful little cover. Thanks, Ryoji. You, weren't you still playing this one, though? Finished last night. It was decent. Ah, the critics call this a contender for Game of the Year. He nods once more. There were no romance options. It's a shooter! All games should have romance options. Wait a second there, Kuma-chan. Class rep seemingly materializes out of thin air, having overheard us and deciding to butt into our conversation. Please don't call me Kuma-chan. For the first time, Kumagawa looks away from his console, glancing at the class rep with a very bored look. Well, his range of facial expressions is very limited, so I'll just consider that to be a glare. A game doesn't need romance options to be entertaining. No, a good game is about strategy. That is why TCGs are the best. Surely even you must be able to see that. Trading card games are nothing more than an excuse to sell ridiculous amounts of merchandise that you don't even need in order to keep playing. Big talk coming from a guy who's bought the last six expansion packs to love me seriously. NERDS! <laughs> if we're talking about games, then what about the sports ones? They're the best. No, they're not. They're awful. They're fucking trading card- they're fucking trading card and gambling simulators. And then shows up the second intruder, butting into our conversation. Might as well just turn this into an open discussion for the whole classroom. Ryoji and the class rat both shoot him murderous looks. Wah, so sorry! Jin hides behind his brother, using him as a shield. No offense, but if a mean look is all it takes to frighten you that much, I don't see you working out as an athlete. Expansions have actual content. Card games just re-release the same thing every time. Oh, really? So you're saying those expansion packs didn't release a bunch of more busty girls with daddy issues and endless sexual appetite? No, no, it was brand new content, right? Kamigawa's cheeks immediately turn red. Hey! Oh, come on, you know she's right. Yeah, but still, cheap shot. Class rep smiled in triumph. Well, my job here is done. If you'll excuse me, boys, I need to convince Kyoko that I'm not wasting my money by buying trading cards instead of expensive Gucci handbags. Okay, what the hell just happened? Women can be such a pain in the ass sometimes. He grumbles something that I can't quite understand. I merely smile and nod. Don't worry, big guy, I'm sure the feeling is mutual. Thanks. With that snide comment completely flying over his head, Kumagawa walks away with his console still in hand, not bothering to look at anything other than the screen. Wow. By the way, Michimaya. Genichiro, Genichiro suddenly pops up out of nowhere, nearly giving me a heart attack. Ah! Whoa! Christ, Jen! How does a dude your size get to be so stealthy? <laughs> thanks! Did you happen to know if Kobayashi's coming to class today? I don't know. He's not exactly the most punctual person out there, but he doesn't, doesn't tend to be this tardy, either. At least he's certainly always arriving earlier than me. I heard something happened during his rehearsal yesterday, and he had to go to the hospital. What? Oh god, is he alright? I don't know. I heard Shima Sensei talking to the school doctor yesterday before I left school. This is worrying. Maybe I should try calling him. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. I was the one who accompanied Kobachan to the doctor's office yesterday. He didn't seem to be doing too bad. Last I heard, the school doctor just told him to go home and rest. 
People just blew this rumor out of proportion. Oh, uh, is that all? Jesus, Jin, you almost gave me a heart attack. Sorry, sorry, I guess the information was just in the wrong in the end. Here, have some. He extends his massive bag of chips to me. It's fine, don't worry about it. I know how, I know how much your food means to you. I push the sack of chips away, already feeling a bit ill just looking at the size of it. Okay, thanks. Munch, 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 munchy, crunchy, munchy, crunchy. Shima Sensei walks into the room, carrying a giant stack of books in his arms. The echo of the books being dropped from the table resounds across the entire classroom. Damn, that must be one very strong table. Alright, everyone, come on, settle down. We have so much to cover today and so very little time, so let's not waste it with pointless conversation. Everyone rushes to their seats. Without missing a beat, Sensei starts to take attendance. Gumagawa! Here. Nizimur Niz Nizumuro. Which one? It's been three years. You know how this works. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we know. Here. <laughs> this game of theirs used to be amusing at first, but it's already become quite a drag having to hear it every day. The hours seem to lag by, taking their sweet little time to, little time to move. Look over at the clock every now and then. Even though it feels like an eternity, the hands on the clock barely move. I'm officially bored out of my mind. I look over to the empty seat next to me, where June was supposed to be. Even though I know it's probably nothing, I can't help but be worried. Class rep said it was nothing, but was it really? Ugh, I'm just... I'm just going around in circles in my head. Mm, one second. Ugh. Try to throw it. Started to resent her husband after he ate most of their children. So she hid away their youngest in the hopes that she that he would one day bring down his father. Shima Sensei is in charge of giving us our history lessons this year. Now he's talking about his favorite topic, Greek mythology. This was this class was supposed to be about Japanese feudal history, mind you, but Sima Sensei tends to just do whatever he wants without consequences. And I get the feeling I've already heard this, this particular lecture a million times over the years. Everyone immediately looks at the door that was suddenly opened. Uh, um, excuse me? June opens the door, peering in through the little crack he opened. Sensei blinks a few times in confusion. Kobayashi, you're... He looks up at the clock. You're almost two hours late for class. I've already put you down as absent for the day, so you might as well wait outside for your next class. But no, I already have enough trouble with the subject without missing class. Shima Sensei sighs, rubbing his forehead and leaning against his table. The next time, please think about that before coming over so late. Just get to your seat already. I'll change your absence record later. Yes! Do not quickly rushing to his seat. As soon as he approaches, his eyes lock onto me. Where were you? I silently mouthed something off to him, hoping he could read my lips. He shoots me a nervous look at Mouth's back. Tell you later. Once June has taken his seat, seat Shima Sensei clears his throat. Well, as I was saying, afraid for her children, Rhea comes up with, came up with a plan together with Gaia to save her youngest, Zeus, giving birth to him in an isolated location. And Wait, excuse me, Sensei, shouldn't this class be about Japanese history? Shima Sensei stops his explanation once again, scowling. Yes, Kobayashi, I know what it says on the schedule, but I decided that this was more important, so I'm giving you classes on ancient history. But... Ancient history! Shima Sensei bangs on the table with his palm, making a noise so loud that we nearly jump from our seats. Can't blame June for not knowing. Shima Sensei definitely has his quirks, and his passion for ancient history and mythology is second to none. But he gets really pissed if you pissed off if you try to stop him from giving classes on the subject. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!